Daniel Boudreau here from naturalmattressfinder.com. And I'm excited today because we're joined by Kim Novik. He's from Spindle Mattresses. So we're going to have an interview. I'm going to ask him some questions about latex, about this spindle story, about his involvement with the spindle company. So uh, Kim Novik, uh, glad to have you with us. How are you? I'm well, Daniel. Thanks. Uh, very glad that spring is finally here. And, you know, look outside and see green. And I'm very excited to be here with you and have this conversation. Excellent. So, thanks well, for having me. Uh, you're welcome. And spring for us around Memorial Day for uh, the people in the, um, the mattress industry is a time where uh, things kind of pick up. A lot of people do their spring cleaning, they uh, realize that maybe it's time to change the, that old mattress. So what would you say to those people? Well, I'd say any time is a good time to buy a mattress. And a lot of pe the, uh, people are conditioned by the mattress industry to buy mattresses on sale. Uh, right. And if you look at your local flyers, there's, well, you used to get flyers, but you still do in your local newspaper flyers, there's always a sale going on. And it could be Memorial Day sale, President's Day sale, Fag Day sale, Arbor Day sale, Secretary's Day sale. Yeah. It doesn't matter. There's always a sale. Um, and as you know, in the online sector, there are always promotions happening. And there's some sites also where you've got, you know, save $300 by 11.59 tonight. And then the next day, it's the same exact thing, you know, 48 they just, hours. They just reboot it to the next they sale. That's it. And um, we, uh, we never used to have sales until around three, maybe four. Three years ago, we decided, you know, everybody else is having sales, and that's what people are conditioned to buy. So we have promotions and sales now. It always says, you know, not always, but we always have an, you know, money off on the mattress. So okay. it's pretty conditioned. Right. Yeah. Uh, we find that most people are buying mattresses not necessarily on sale days, but when there are life changes happening, for instance, if they're moving. Uh, that's a big time that mattresses get sold. Uh, if there are weddings coming up, if there's graduation, those kinds of things, they're opening up their summer houses, people need mattresses. So we see more life events happening to uh, drive mattress sales more than uh, red better days. Okay. And I know that this, this uh, interview will be uh, live and available whenever, but uh, we're, we, we, all, we are also approaching uh, July 1st, which is uh, we're at July in that time where it is a, it's a popular moving day. So that leads me to the question of uh, if somebody orders a mattress online, they get it to their house, they're kind of responsible for discarding their old mattress or finding a new home for it. What's been your experience in suggesting uh, some things that people that can do with their old mattress, or are you involved in that at all uh, with, at Spindle? Well, we ha you know we get that uh, we get that uh, question every now and then, uh, but because we don't really offer it as a service, uh, people know up front that they're responsible for getting rid of their old mattress. Uh, Quite often, if they ask us, we'll say, um, put it on Craigslist, a free cycle, donate it. Know what your uh, recycling options are. Um, worst area, you call up 1 800 Got Junk, and they'll cart it away for you. And paying someone 100 bucks to cart your mattress away may seem like a lot of money, but it's still cheaper than going to the big box store and paying them to do it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, great. Uh, there's a couple of options there that people can use. So it's not that big of a headache. Um, all right. So, well, let's talk about Spindle as a mattress company. So tell us briefly about this, the history of Spindle and your involvement with the company. What's your role in Spindle? Right. So Spindle was um, founded about eight years ago, almost to the date, uh, by Neil Van Patten, who uh, is an interesting guy, is a fourth generation mattress maker. I mean, who knew there was such a thing, right? right. But his great, 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 great uncle um, founded the company, I think it was in 1915. And that was, they, his dad still runs that independent family owned company 
in Syracuse. And the, we can get into the whole thing about indie mattress makers, which is a great topic also. But Neil decided, you know, this is what he knows, and he wanted to have his own mattress company. And it was, I guess, 2013, and the online sector was heating up. He was one of the first people into it and decided that he wanted to build great mattresses, remarkable mattresses at kick-ass prices and do it on an e-commerce platform, uh, direct consumer, and the 10-inch latex mattress really fit that model. So it was something that logistics allows us to ship through the mail, two or three boxes, you get it, you put it together yourself, which is pretty par for the course for most mattresses in this category. Even if you went to a uh, specialty store, they're going to come and assemble it for you in your house. So this saves you some money to do it by yourself. Um, I came into the company about um, a year into that. I've been with the company now for about six and a half years. Uh, I found Neil. I saw what he was doing with this company. We met each other, hit it off, and um, I've, I've been here since. I love working with Spindle, uh, the values of the company, uh, meet mine. Uh, I get to do a lot of different things. I work with customers all the time, work with branding, uh, new product development, and uh, it, it's a fun company to work with. Now, that's a great, that's a great story. Um, and so that leads me to uh, this question. I just thought of it now. So uh, you talked about um, purchasing mattresses, purchasing a mattress in a big box store versus online. What would you say is the percentage that goes to uh, the middleman, so to speak, like the, the sales rep, the, the transportation involved into, in shipping a mattress to a big box store uh, versus online. How, can, how much can somebody expect to save or is there anything to save? Oh, you mean if you were to, you know, saving is a funny, funny, store, funny term. Right. Because, so, you know, <laughs> because the way I see it about is the val- that- We can talk about value. Yeah. Exactly. The way I see it is that you're for you with your pr- uh, product, for example, yes, you are cutting out the big box store because you ship directly to the consumer, but you're also um, increasing the value that person that person gets with their the, the product, the better materials, better customer service, etc. Right. So um, as far as w- who's shopping online and who's shopping in big box stores. Uh, or specialty stores, I, I think the number now is still around 20 to 25% of sales are happening online. And you might know that have a better number than I do on that. Uh, but the majority of people still want to go to a store and touch the mattress. Uh, mm-hmm. Even though they know it's, you know, it's like going, buying a car and closing the door and listening to how it sounds and saying, I'm going to get that car or kicking the tires. It doesn't tell you anything. The only way of knowing if a mattress is going to work is by sleeping on it. Exactly. um, Exactly. So you don't, you don't really get a true sense of what the mattress is going to do for you uh, by trying it out for five minutes in the department store or a a furniture store. You know, you need need at least the people that I, uh, the companies that I work with, everybody suggests at least a month for your body to get used to it. So in any case, you're backed by a 365-day uh, comfort guarantee with Spindle. And so for I suggest that people have nothing to lose by just trying it out and see how it goes. Well, they don't. And I tell people, you know, give yourself a good 30 to 60 days. Take it. It's a gift. Give it to yourself. Give yourself 30 to 60 days at least to understand what's going on with the mattress. Uh, we have a 365-day money-back comfort guarantee. And, you know, if you don't like the mattress, we'll give you your money back. We ask people, you know, give yourself some time. If you come to us, let us know what's going on. If we think that we can make a difference in that mattress by sending you a different mix of latex, we'll do that. Uh, if we don't think that we can fix that mattress, we'll offer your money back. We've got people who come to us after 10 months and say, you know, I've been trying this mattress. It's just, I need something else. We've got, you know, or we'd say, oh, you know, I want to firm it up. I want to soften up. No problem. We can do that for you. Uh, people understand the, um, 
how these things, how these mattresses uh, are modular and you can change them. Uh, and they, that's a great value with the spindle mattress. So would it be a scenario for somebody who, for example, gets a mattress at their house, they're tried sleeping on it, it's way too soft. And what happens in that scenario? Uh, well, it depends. You know, soft, all of these terms are, um, are abstract. They've got no baseline. You know, what mm -hmm. you think of as soft is something that someone else thinks of as firm. Or Typical let's say that they, may, you know, they might be sinking into it too much. They, they, may, they, they feel like they're sinking into it, into yeah, it too much. Yeah, so um, too soft is, uh, there are a couple of things going on there. Too soft could be uh, what's going up. One of the things we're going to do is ask you uh, height and weight to make sure uh, from a body mass standpoint that you are compatible with the mattress so that you're not compromising the mattress too much. We're also going to check to find out what's underneath the mattress because if you don't have the right support underneath the mattress and it can't support the mattress, it's not going to support you. Um, making a latex mattress firmer is a lot easier than making it softer. So if we needed to make it firmer, uh, we'd send you another layer of firm latex. If we think that's going to help, we might say, Try it, throw it on the floor, isolate the mattress, let's see what's going on. Take a layer of latex out, let's see what happens if you're sleeping on two layers of latex. Is that going to make it firmer? And these are all data points that we can use if we need to, to um, validate if it makes sense to send someone another layer of latex. Sometimes it's just as easy as, you know, a phone call. Sometimes it's like, you know, we need to really find out what's going on here. Let's, you know, work on this a bit. So it can be an iterative process. Okay, so Going that's great. It's like a case by case, um, on a case by case basis. You get in touch Definitely. with the people, you talk with them on the phone. So it's a very, uh, from what I understand, it's a very uh, personalized service in, in the event that somebody is not uh, getting optimized comfort or sleep that they're looking for. Well, let, let's talk about the, um, the components of the mattress, uh, the main component being the latex. So a lot of people are interested in uh, knowing where the latex is, is sourced from. Where does this mysterious uh, material come from? Where does the juice, where's the juice, right? Yeah. Uh, the juice comes from uh, mostly from Sri Lanka. Sometimes from what we understand, it can be supplemented from other locations in uh, mostly from uh, the Pacific Rim. India, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Malaysia, but for the most part, our manufacturer, Latex Green, gets it from Sri Lanka. It's grown on USDA certified plantations. Uh, once it leaves the plantation, the USDA certification really doesn't mean much, and that's where the GOALS certification clicks in, the uh, Global Organic Latex Standard. And that has uh, pieces in there uh, as far as following the supply chain is where it's going from uh, plantation to manufacturer to shipper to um, the people who are putting the mattress together. All of those pieces have got to be um, meet the standard for global, the global organic latex standard. Um, so the, well, I was on a roll there. I, I think ordered, I have something else, but <laughs> tell me more. In, in order to get that certification, then uh, the, the manufacturer needs to provide proof of certain things along that whole uh, supply chain in order to get the certification? Is that how it works? Right. So there's some social value -ish, uh, pieces that go into that, and that could be um, no child labor being used, uh, people on the plantation being educated, uh, wastewater issues, uh, what's being used in the latex, um, so as far as organic, the global organic latex standard is a bit interesting because it says um, that when the latex that we use is, night, is what's called 100% natural latex. Uh, when you're dealing with latex, you're starting with a base of about 95%, 90 to 95% latex juice. And then um, the global or, the uh, gold standard says that you have to have um, the latex, 95% of it has got to be 
certified organic. The other 5% are materials they put in to uh, aerate it and vulcanize the rubber to bake it. And those um, chemicals are sulfur, sodium, uh, fatty acid soaps, zinc oxide. Um, so they need to do that. But there are also two other standards for um, goals. One of them is 50%. Latex it can have no less than 50% latex, and the other is can have no less than 70% latex. One of them has graphite, the other has choir. Um, so you may be getting an organic latex product where only 50% of that manufactured product comes out of a tree. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's and, not the case with ours. Right. Yours is the 95%, 5%, right? Correct. Yeah, 95% of our, the, if you're dealing with a manufactured product, there's nothing natural about latex foam. It's made in a factory. And 95% um, of that finished product comes out of a tree. Okay, interesting. And so is the, um, is the baking process done in the country of origin? Like, let's say from Sri Lanka, does the whole uh, latex layer get uh, manufactured there? Or is the sap taken to the United States and transformed in the United States? No, our latex comes from Sri Lanka. It's manufactured there. There are three latex manufacturers here in the United States. Uh, no latex is grown. No, they, no rubber trees are here in the United States yet. Um, uh, there's some in Guatemala, uh, it's originally from Brazil. You have a lot of latex coming in from Africa, um, Pacific Rim, via, again, Vietnam, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India. Um, but uh, ours comes from uh, Sri Lanka. It's manufactured there. Okay. And um, this is kind of getting very, um, very scientific, but in that 5%, are there any, well, first of all, are there any of those uh, ingredients toxic and um, the second part to the question is uh, would you be able to say like what is the function of some of these uh, ingredients that are in that five percent of uh, the, the, the latex mix i'll answer your last question first and the answer is no i have absolutely no idea what they do okay. and um, also when you're combining those chemicals you have compounds and they may act they may I mean, you remember chemistry 101 uh, when you were in high school, you know, when you combine things, they can act differently than they do in their own uh, separate piece. I have no idea what, how that's done. Uh, from what I understand, all latex is made that way. Uh, the different companies are going to have different formulas, uh, different amounts that they'll put in. Uh, but for the most part, that's, that's what's being used. If someone tells you the only thing that's in their latex foam is latex, Ask them how they make it. It's like trying to make an omelet without breaking eggs. It, it can't be done. If you were to bake that latex, you'd end up with something very firm, like very hard, like a, a lacrosse ball, something like the balls the Incas used for baseball. You yeah. wouldn't want to sleep on that, you know? Yeah, you need some, um, some ingredients to make it. to, uh, to It's like baking a cake, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. guess that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, souffle, you know, because it's got all that air in it. Yeah. You know, and then you got to do something to it. Yeah. So you got the flour, you add the eggs, the eggs help aerate it. You may, it might have some, some baking soda in there. And that's, that's uh, what you need to make the cake or else you end up with a, a flat, hard piece of piece of uh, something that you don't want to eat. <laughs> but Yeah. Daniel, you know, I think you should go into the latex manufacturing business, man. There's opportunity there Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with your recipe. It would taste better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, um, great. And the a lot of people are wondering about uh, Talalay latex foam and in comparison to Dunlop. Now, you only use uh, the Dunlop latex foam in uh, the spindle mattress. So uh, was there any particular reason for that preference? Um, originally, it had to do with supply chain. Um, when Neil started the company, uh, we looked at... Um, Getting latex, I believe the company at the time was called Latex International. Uh, it's one of the manufacturers here in the United States. Um, and they were going through reorganization at the time and uh, didn't feel comfortable that they'd be, we'd be able to, if they went belly up as a consumer, it wouldn't mean anything to you. You'd have your mattress. But if we were making latex out of that, if we were making beds out of that latex and they had happened to go under, 
we would have had to find another supplier. So um, we looked at using um, Vita Talave coming in from Holland, um, which was wonderful product. And again, uh, we would have had to we would have had to bring in containers full of that and warehouse it. Uh, we worked with um, Mountaintop Foam out of Pennsylvania, and uh, they were making latex for us. Uh, but the only, you know, the main reason we didn't use Talalay is really supply chain issues. It's a good product. Um, it has a bit of a different feel than um, Dunlop, but it's it's a good product, and there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Um, the um, what I, what I've seen from and the, the response I've heard from people is that it's the the difference is subjective. I mean, some people might be able to tell the difference. Other people don't notice any difference. You might have had experience with the two. Yeah, we've done focus groups. So we did focus groups with uh, Talave. We've done it with polyurethane. We've done it with memory foam. We've done it with Dunlop. We did it with continuous pour Dunlop. The biggest differentiator is power of suggestion. So if someone doesn't know what's in a mattress, it doesn't necessarily influence their feel. If you tell them what's in it, then they start having an idea, oh, it feels like this, or I like this one more than that one. It's like Pinot Noir. If all you want to drink is Pinot Noir, if that's what you've been told, that's what you should be drinking. If you just want a good glass of red wine, it doesn't matter what's in that wine, just as long as it's good, you know? So it's, um, there are some, you know, Talavay aficionados and some Dunlop people, and that's all they'll sleep on. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of the materials out there are very good. Uh, Talavay really shines in its very soft um, densities. When they start getting into the higher densities, uh, the materials start the differentiators start falling apart. Okay. But there's no, like in essence, there's no major difference that would make it uh, one so much more comfortable than the other. Uh, it's, you know, again, it's subjective. Uh, yeah. Personally, I find some of the Talavays, uh, it depends. Again, if you've got Talavay and it doesn't have a good base underneath it, if you use it as a topper on a soft mattress, I find I almost get seasick on it. Uh, okay. If you use the same topper on a very firm mattress, it feels great. It starts feeling like Dunlop, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. So we can say some, like from, from one product to the other, it was, there's so many variations possible. It's hard there to are, say one versus the other. Yeah, and there aren't. Some people really like the, feel, the liveliness of, of Talavay. They like that springiness, you know? So Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you what, so if somebody's going out uh, uh, to maybe thinking, they're thinking about replacing their mattress, they're looking at um, natural latex options, they're looking at hybrid mattresses, pillow top, I mean, there's so many, uh, uh, there's, a, there's kind of a jargon to navigate through, but just getting down to the foam, why would somebody uh, be inclined to choose a natural latex mattress over a polyurethane mattress if we're just talking about the foam layers? Um, part of it's going to be subjective. Um, it's going to be some people are going to like the feel of polyurethane more than uh, the feel of uh, latex. Um, some of it's also a lifestyle choice. Uh, some people, it's kind of like, you know, some people are going to eat at McDonald's. Some people are going to choose to get their groceries at Whole Foods. Um, they're people who want to minimize their exposure to potentially dangerous chemicals are going to want to avoid polyurethane. It's made of plastic, uh, oil, um, and, you know, a lot of people want to avoid that. So they're going to latex. They're looking for a more natural alternative. Okay. And they're also with the, um, the, the fire barrier, uh, which is wool in the spindle mattress and versus a polyurethane mattress, it would be some kind of polyester fiber treated with fire retardant chemicals. And those might be uh, detrimental to your health in the long term. It could be, or they often use a silica sock. So a sock that's made out of, you know, silica embedded thread, uh, and that's inert. So that's really not going to hurt you. But there, most of the people are coming from, there are still mattresses that are being made with lots of chemicals. And it's hard to find out what's in them. 
Uh, so play it safe and go to something that's, you know, got more natural ingredients to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see uh, the, so the spring spindle mattress, that's an, it's an all latex mattress. So that means it doesn't have a coil layer, uh, which a, a traditional mattress would have. So um, what would you say to people who are maybe interested in the mattress, but they've always slept on a traditional mattress with a coil layer? It, do they need it? Are they going to miss that, that bounce that's provided by the, the coil layer? Or would they be satisfied on and comfortable on the spindle mattress? You know, these are all subjective. They're subjective things. Uh, yeah. The terms we use have absolutely no baseline. Soft, medium, firm. You know, what do they mean? Again, they mean something different to you than they do to someone else. Um, as far as springiness goes, the big advantage of going to an all foam mattress, latex, memory foam, is that is the motion transfer separation. And um, yeah, we won't lie to you, memory foam, latex is great at motion transfer separation. So if you were and I are in bed together, and you roll over, I'm not going to feel it. You know, uh, memory foam is going to dampen that even more. Uh, individually wrapped coils do it to a certain extent. Um, the worst is a Bonnell coil. Uh, if, you know, you're in bed with someone and they roll over, you're going to feel it. Chances are. Uh, some people are very active in bed. Uh, some people are very disturbed, even if someone just, you know, rolls over once. Right. So uh, if there, someone's looking for motion transfer separation issues, foam is definitely a great way to go. It's also you know, a subjective feel issue. Some people don't like the feel of springs. They just don't. Yeah. And they uh, prefer the feeling of foam. So you would say to those people, just, just try it out. You have 365 days, right? Um, no, we try to um, we try to vet our customers before they uh, buy from us. We have a 365 day money back guarantee, but we our our business really isn't positioned as a free trial company. There are companies out there that are free trial, and the margins on those mattresses are ridiculous. Um, we're a small company. We're agile. We're very high touch. With customers, um, we want to make sure that you're getting the mattress that's going to have a really good chance of working for you. Uh, if you've tried five mattresses in the past three months, uh, we'd recommend that you shop locally rather than trying another online mattress. Right. Okay. Um, the would the spindle mattress have a weight limit? Um, do, is it recommended for very he heavy people, people, or is there a certain body type that would be that you recommend this uh, mattress to? Yeah, great question. Um, the it's a it's a complicated question, complicated issue. Uh, we find that people we use BMI as a marker, uh, as a conversation starter. Uh, and we find that people with BMIs over 31, 32 might do better with a mattress that's bigger than ours. Uh, they might need a 13-inch foam mattress rather than a 10-inch foam mattress. They just need that much more material. Uh, someone at the other end of the spectrum, someone who's closer to a, a 20 BMI, uh, you know, may not put any kind of impression on the mattress at all. So, you know, if you looked at it as a bell curve kind of thing, you know, like this, you know, the people that are up here are going to do much better than the people who are on the way down here. For the most part, uh, we've got people who are built like linebackers or lumberjacks who are sleeping on our 10 inch mattress. Excuse me, your, your phone's going off too, right? So, um, you know, who are sleeping on a 10 inch mattress and they're doing well. You know, other people need a lot more loft. Um, and what you're really looking for is a combination of uh, cushion and support. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you were, you know, if, if you're 5'10 and 240 pounds, we may be able to accommodate you if you liked a really firm mattress. So you're not so going to get a lot of support. You might not get a lot of cushion. 
Right. So the, the, the starting point is somebody's uh, wondering if that this mattress is for them and they're a bit of a heavier person, you would say, start with a, a BMI. So what's the BMI you said, um, remind me of 31, 32, 32 okay. starts getting, you know, it's on the cost again, yeah. but it's just a conversation starter. Yeah. Um, okay. and we, we have a, we have a calculator on our website. We encourage people to use it. If you get kicked off the Island, we say, call us, you know, let us know what's going on because, you know, you might say, I've been sleeping on latex all my life. I love it. I just want another latex mattress. Help me. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, we get it. You know, you know what, you know what latex feels like. Uh, if people are coming to us and saying they want something really, 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 really soft, uh, the only way you're going to get that, we think, is with the pillow top. And you could do it with topper, but latex, a 10-inch latex mattress is, it's that's why we call our mattress medium firm. We want to reinforce the fact that it's not soft. Okay. And I've been talking to, uh, I had a short conversation with uh, Neil Patton. He's the, the, the founder of um, Spindle. He said there was a, a couple of changes that were made to the mattress. Can you tell us about that? He said there are some new certifications, a couple of changes yeah. to yeah, yeah. the actual mattress. So we, um, I'm going to sit down for this one. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's uh, quite simple. It's just another iteration. Uh, when Neil started the company, he started it with um, using um, synthetic foam, synthetic latex. Great product. They'd be able to sell um, a queen mattress for 700, 800 bucks. People laid them up, but not enough. And people started asking for natural mattresses. So next iteration was going into uh, natural foam, 100% natural latex. Great product. Um, we had the opportunity now to work with um, Latex Green, and now we're certified organic. So the mattresses are certified organic. They have the gold certification. Uh, the wool is GOTS certified. The cotton is GOTS certified. Global Organic Textile Standard. All of these standards, you know, people call up and say, is your mattress organic? And if we say no, they hang up the phone. But these standards don't mean anything. The words don't mean anything unless you read the standards and you make sure that the standard is, um, meets your needs. I love reading those standards. They're really interesting, especially the ones that are annotated so you can understand what's going on. Um, so, yeah, the, the, uh, the wool is now certified organic. The cotton was certified organic. And now the latex is certified organic. Uh, it's the mattress is basically the same. It's still cotton, wool, and latex. The wool, as you said earlier, is your flame barrier. Um, there's a nylon zipper and there's a metal fob, you know, on the trolley. That's the mattress. Oh, there's some polyester thread and there's also some Kevlar thread. You need the Kevlar thread in order to get um, the flame certification because you have a tape around the edge of the mattress. When you poke it through, you're creating airspace. So the Kevlar is going to prevent that from happening if there's a fire. Well, great. Um, this, this has been mattress education uh, 101. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 302. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, excellent. Uh, Kim Novick from Spindle. It's been excellent talking to you. Uh, I'll be sure to keep in touch with you guys. If you want to check out some more details about the Spindle natural latex mattress, you can go to my website, naturalmattressfinder.com. Just type spindle into the search bar. Uh, the page will come right up. And you can also compare the spindle with other uh, third-party certified natural latex mattresses. My name is Daniel Boudreau from naturalmattressfinder.com. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you on the next video.